So this is a guy I met recently. We got talking about raw foods, and I asked him if he'd like to do a, a YouTube video, and he agreed. So we did a quick interview. So listen to Jason's story, and I'll give my opinion on where I'm feeling that Jason is going off the deep end in his raw foods journey. So listen up. You don't drink water at all? So, you, so Jason, you don't drink water at all? or Don't drink anything. Yeah. So that's the first big mistake. Jason does not drink water. And what's your matter? Oh, oh, I do occasionally. Uh, like about once a week I'll have a carrot and have, celery juice. Yeah, but you don't drink water. Yeah. What's your motivation for that? Well, I just don't feel thirsty. I don't yeah. need it. So waiting for thirst is very, very poor indication of hydration status. Obviously in Jason's case, he's a clear sign of anorexia. So when you're anorexic, or when you're really sick, your thirst mechanism can just be non-existent. So if you wait for that to happen, it's sort of like, uh, like waiting till you pass out before you go to bed. I'm not sleepy, I don't feel like laying down. And so you just keep going, 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 and eventually, boom, you just fail. So that's Jason's first mistake, is waiting to thirst to drink. I'm never thirsty, but I'm drinking at least up to a gallon a day. I never wait for thirst before I drink. I just drink. you read a book somewhere or about not drinking water? No. Uh, or did you see something on the internet or something like that? Or? I can't remember. Yep, yep, yep. But, um... But, um... I think I read somewhere that if, if you need a drink, you'll be naturally thirsty and mm -hmm. you'll feel dry. Yep. If I was thirsty or I felt dry or yep. something, or, and then I'd drink water. So, so again, we can see that you know people read books and they, they take it as like 100% you know, rule, which is... Uh, you know, can get you into some really bad strife, especially if you're taking advice from these raw food gurus who are smoking bongs, who are anorexic themselves, who are bulimic, who are totally out of shape. They might be nice people, but if you want to get health advice, don't take health advice from people who can't do it themselves, who aren't obviously getting the results they desire. Some people, some, some people say that thirst is but, a weak indication of true dehydration. But, um... You know, like fruit and vegetables, they're over ninety percent water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just my diet. Yeah. It's that the only thing concentrated I eat is rice cakes, really. Yeah. Everything else is like over ninety percent yeah. water. So do you do you do you give yourself a label of what you eat? Are you a vegetarian? Oh yeah, you, but I eat lentils too. So you're veg you're a vegan or a vegetarian? Yeah. Or, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's up? I don't have any dairy. Yep. yep. So people might meet Jason as the first vegan they've ever met and go, Oh my God, a vegan diet just kills your health. Anorexia kills your health. Vegan diet, healthiest way to go. Anorexia drops you off the deep end. So what we're seeing a lot in medical journals, on raw food forums or vegan forums, people having their real health issues have anorexia and people don't want to get into that because that's all personal and stuff like that. So they pre pretend that's not even happening and go, oh, it must be because you're a raw vegan or because you're a vegan. That's why you're having health issues. We'll pretend that you're not anorexic. We'll just, because that's like, you know, that's too much effort to get into that. We'll just, you know, do the easy way and, and blame your uh, plant-based diet. So we can see in Jason's case, dehydration, anorexia. Let's get more into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is your favorite food? What's, what's one food? Four paws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many of those could you eat? How big is that? It's a decent ball. Well, well, I eat a quarter because I have other fruit as well. Yeah. Hey, Jason eats a quarter of the paw. The <laughs> Jason eats a quarter of the pawpaw for a meal. That's about a hundred calories for a meal. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the morning. So for breakfast, what do you have? You have a quarter paw. Well, paw. brunch, whatever. Brunch, yeah. Breakfast and lunch. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Breakfast and lunch. I have about a quarter of a pork pork. Yep, and what else? An apple and an orange. Yep. So we're talking 200 calories for breakfast and lunch. 100 calories for breakfast, 100 calories for lunch. 200 calories. Yep. And it may vary, like sometimes I have other fruit. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, so you never any big, do you have any big fruit meals or like large fruit Not meals? Than that. Yep, yep. That's pretty small, that's, that's like, uh, you know, that's 150 calories. Yeah, it's not much at all. It's about 
That's about satisfied. Yeah, that's about five. If you're anorexic, 150, 200 calories will satisfy you. Five percent of what I'd recommend. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. But I eat big at night from the happy meal. Yep. Yeah. What about sleep? What time do you go to bed normally? What time do you think sleep's important or you need, don't yeah. need? Yeah, I go to bed too late. What? Like last night I went to bed at 12 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. What time do you get up? Classic sign of under eating is difficulty going to sleep at night time. You sort of, you know, you don't want to go to bed because your body's forcing you to stay up to f find more calories. When you're getting enough calories, it's really easy to go to bed early. So that's another sign that your diet's not working for you, you're not eating enough, is it's hard to go to sleep early. You know, I find it's really easy for me to go to bed early and get up early. I like to go to bed close to sundown and get up with, with the sun. That's a good, uh, a good natural cycle we get into. Normally, so you, you think you're eating too much? You think you're eating too much food? Uh, yeah, nine times. Too big a meal. Right? Mm -hmm. So you reckon uh, three medium potatoes is too much food, or no? Plus everything else. I yeah, eat. but yeah, eat vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like cooked pumpkin. I think I eat what, too much. What, do you have a whole pumpkin? Do you? <laughs> no. Big. Jason was laughing at the idea of eating a whole pumpkin. I mean, a whole pumpkin's like, you know, maybe 600 calories, you know what I mean? But just because it's big in volume and low in calories, people think, oh my God, it's too much food. So again, this is a mistake people get into. They're thinking they're eating too much, but if you look at their physiology, their BMI is under 17.5, which is only anorexic level. But still they think in their head, I'm eating too much, I'm a pig, I'm a pig, I'm gonna get fat. But I'm an anorexic, I'm a starvation victim. So that's the problem people get into. So we can see that, you know, all these people say you shouldn't eat a, big, a meal bigger than your fist because that's the size of your stomach. That's like saying you shouldn't carry anything in your hands because your hands are only this big. You shouldn't carry anything bigger than that in your hands. That's like saying you shouldn't breathe your lungs because your lungs are only this size and you shouldn't expand them. That's like saying when you go to the toilet to defecate, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be bigger than a stick because that's how big your anus is when it's you know, contracted. These limited thinking, limited beliefs get people with some serious health issues. So we're seeing that Jason is having 200 calories for breakfast, lunch, and then he's having dinner, three medium potatoes. What have we got? 300 calories, 400 calories for dinner. So we've got a total of 600 calories, and Jason's feeling guilty for eating that much food. You can eat a whole pumpkin. I mean, a whole pumpkin's fine. There's not many, there's not many calories in pumpkin. You know, oh. It's pretty low calorie. But it tastes sweet. Yeah. Now this is the next problem. Jason is feeling that sugary foods are bad for you because he's listened to David Wolf and all those Robert Young gurus who, you know, wouldn't have a clue that sugar's bad, you should stay away from sugar. So Jason's feeling guilty for eating pumpkin. So he's limiting his pumpkin calories. Is that bad? Well, that means the sugar content's not fairly high. So is that good or bad? <laughs> I don't think it's good. So you think you should eat? Pumpkin has got too much sugar. Eat less pumpkin. So you're addicted to pumpkin. Addicted to cooked pumpkin. <laughs> a pumpkin junkie. Potatoes. Addicted to them. I don't think you can be addicted to them. It's good carbohydrate source, you know. That's pretty good. What um? Oh, I mean, in, in moderation. If I ate less of them, it'd be bad. So he's eat. Jason's eating three potatoes a day. He wants to minimise that. He wants to minimise that. Yeah, you reckon? Nah, man, I can I can eat more potatoes, more fruit, more pumpkin, you know. Because otherwise, it's, what are you gonna eat then? What do you, what's what's left to eat then? No, I still mean eating potato and pumpkin. I just mean yeah. having a smaller meal. But how many? Ca a smaller meal than three medium potatoes. Can we get smaller than that, Jason? How would you, would you be getting there? You'd be get, getting hardly anything. Yeah. Oh, I think you get it. I don't think you need a lot of calories. How many calories do you get? And that's the next limiting belief. I don't think we need a lot of calories. He's probably read some Victorious Kulvinskis book, some Breatharian Prana wishy-washy fairy tale book, and that's why Jason's health is going down hardcore. That's why Jason is, you know, suffering with muscle issues, energy issues, digestion issues, hydration issues, health issues, because his body is simply not getting enough calories. He's like the horse in the paddock who's starved. You know what I mean? You cannot starve yourself to health. The body needs a shitload of amount of calories. Adults at least 3,000 calories a day. If you want to have that passion that you really deserve, that you really want, 
you got to slam in those carbohydrate calories, 10 grams of carbs per kilo body weight per day, and you'll be hitting life hard. Otherwise, you're just floundering. I did a bike race yesterday. It's amazing talent in the bike race, but after the fifth lap, people were starting to fade. I'm like, guys, you were doing great in the first few laps. Now you're starting to fade. You're under eating so much, you don't have enough stamina for the last few laps when it really matters. You know, so people doing a lot of training on great bikes, all the, everything, the good mindset, but not consuming enough carbohydrates to be strong in the last stages of the race, just fading and getting dropped off the back. So I see that all the time, and you know, it's not just raw food or vegans or you know whatever. I see in all areas of society is people under consume carbohydrates. So it's uh, this is whole carbohydrate paranoia. People are made to feel guilty for eating you know a large portion of carbohydrates for their diet for their meal for the day. Yeah, they're made to feel guilty for that. Get people under carb, get them glycogen depleted, get them glucose exhausted, and they're easy to corral around. There's no revolution then because people are like, man, I'm so freaking hungry and fatigued. I don't care about world issues. Just I just need some more food to eat. And then they you feed them up on the fatty, greasy stuff. They feel shit. They feel fat. They look fat, and it's just that downward cycle goes. So let's listen to more Jason's story because I think this is really important. Now, you reckon? I don't know. I never measure it. I never think about it. Jason has no idea how many calories he's eating a day. But he still thinks he's eating too much in his head. Do you think it's a good idea, though, to make sure you get enough? Or No, because I don't think you need uh, a lot of calories. Mm -hmm. Classic sign of anorexia. I don't, I don't need a lot of calories. You know, I'm, I'm eating too much as it is. Obviously, Jason, you're overeating. After reading, like, like some people in some countries, they don't have a lot of calories yet. They work hard all yeah. day. How many calories a day do they eat? Um, a lot less than the Western diet. I don't know that. How, how much do you think? I, I don't You're not know. sure. No, no, no. So again, here we have the subjective. We have these theories, but we can't back them up with any real hard data. So I'll go to Thailand or Philippines and you'll see people carrying bowls of rice and you think, oh, that, that must be for their family. That's for themselves. They eat so much rice over there, the workers and their you know, muscly as their hard work and smiley people, massive bowls of rice and vegetables, you know what I mean, lots of fruit. You'll see kids eating a bag of rambutans to themselves. You'll never see that in Australia or the United States or Canada or Europe, a, a kid eating a bag of fruit to themselves. You won't see that, you know. So people eat massive amounts of carbohydrates in these nations where they're working hard, they're lean, they're trim. You'll never see fat people eating rice or fruit as a staple. Why? Because you can simply cannot get fat on rice or fruit. Impossible. It doesn't matter if you're eating too many calories. These foods just pass through you so efficiently, your body metabolizes them so well, that it's physiologically impossible to get fat on rice, fruits, carbohydrates. Even refined sugars, you wouldn't be able to eat enough. What happens is we add refined sugars to fat to make chocolate, ice cream, pastries, pasties, these fatty things, pizzas, etc. And then we think, oh, this is the carbohydrates making me fat. It's the, it's the flour making me fat. It's the sugar making me fat. It's not the bacon. It's not the grease. It's not the lard. It's not the oils. It's the the sugar's making me fat, and it's not the fat making me fat. No, no, no. You know what I mean? What about... I read that it's not less. So, Vic Victorious Kowinskis, is he a big motivator for you about less calories, or... What do you, what do you think? Or what's your, what's your motivation for less calories? Calorie restriction? Is that... Um, I just don't think it's... Uh, uh, you probably need a certain amount of calories, yep. but I don't think it's... A lot, that yeah. You, need. But you can't put a number on it. No. No. This is why I stress it again and again and again. Learn your calories. Game for 3,000 plus a day for an adult if you want to live at intensity. If you want to burn the body blubber, if you want to get fitter, stronger, leaner, get more calories in so you can live more with more passion. Fuck off the coffee, fuck off the drugs, race clean, race hard, get the calories in, carbohydrates high, fat low, vegans where it's at, fruit's your friend. And when someone says, oh, you, don't need to eat, you need to eat less calories, it's like, man, you need to eat less fat, more carbohydrates, so you've got enough glycogen to hit it hard. You know, I say this over and over again because we've got this thing in the health scene where people are like, oh, too much sugar, man, too many carbohydrates, oh, I've got to be anorexic and starve myself and freak out and do drugs for energy. I've got to do Krakow for energy. I've got to do green tea mate for energy. I've got to do cocaine for energy. I've got to use Viagra to get my, you know, sex life in order. Get rid of those things. 
high carbohydrate, low fat, 3,000 calories plus, 10 grams per kilo of body weight per day. Use that as your guide and just crank it. 